guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Sal speaking. Today I would like to talk about Far Eastern Swords. And when we talk about Far Eastern Swords, we must talk about Naga tribes. Well, the Naga people is an ethnic group that consists in several different tribes. These tribes speak so many different languages. And we are talking about a really big area from the northeastern of India to the northwestern part of Myanmar, or in other words, Burma. It is interesting to know and somewhat bizarre that they uh, practice head hunting. They are not the first, neither the last people who are going around hunting for people's heads and whenever they do that, they bring it back home with them and they keep it as a trophy. I found these weapons, these swords, and the weapons that these tribes use to be quite interesting. And you know, I thought, why not to share it with you guys? So check this out. Here we have a naga, and he's wearing a dao, and usually they wear it in a scabbard, which is slung from the right shoulder. The naga live in the areas near the Assam Burma border. The Dao is carried as a general purpose implement as well as a weapon. This is a Dao or also called Noklang. It is a two-hand sword of the Kazi people of Assam. It is made of iron grip with brass mounts. This is a Da. It's spelled D-H-A and it is a sword with a single edge blade from Burma. It is from Burma, it's got a cylindrical grip covered with white metal, the blade inlaid with copper and silver. Quite a precious weapon. This sword is called Castane. I don't know how to pronounce it, but probably Castane or Castan. This is a sword from Sri Lanka and it's got card wooden grip and pommel and steel knuckle guard. It is decorated with silver inlay and brass. Quite a nice sword. This is a Chinese iron sword, single edged. The hilt is simply the tongue of the blade and usually is bound with a cord. This is a Taliban short sword, as you can see, and it's from the Christian. It belongs to the Christian community in the Philippines. The grip is wooden with cane binding, believe it or not. This weapon is called Barong, Barong is a short sword, although to me it appears like a short knife, in fact it is to be considered also a knife. It belongs to the Moro people of the Philippines and Saba as well. This sword is called Mandao or Parang Hilang, the Malay name. This sword is used by the Diak head, I'm not swearing here, this, this is how it's called, Diak head hunters of Borneo. These guys go around and uh, they're head hunters, as you can see from these pictures. This sword is called Parang Pandit, sword of the sea Diaks of Southeast Asia. It is a single edge sword and it's got a forward angle blade. This sword is called Camplin. It is a single edge sword and it belongs to the Moros and C. Diax. It is carved wooden hilt. So the workmanship thereof is just awesome. This sword is called 
Pliwain. It is a sword from the Celebes Archipelago. It's got a single edge blade and a distinctive carved wooden hilt. So let us examine a little bit these swords. Talking about the Tao of the Kakin people of Assam, so the first weapon that I showed you in the video, I think so far, and comparing this sword to the other swords, I think this one is my favorite sword. I like the fact that it's got a thin, you know, a thin blade. It's quite, a, it is somewhat uh, long as a sword. And I really like the, the way, uh, you know, the soldiers, the, the people from the Naga tribe wear it on the right shoulder, you know. The right shoulder, maybe it can have lots of reasons. Maybe there are many reasons behind the choice of the right shoulder. Because usually the right is the strongest part. So I don't know why they put it that way, but maybe there is something, there is something uh, behind this. So talking about the Dao and the knock or Nokan, the second weapon that I showed you in the, in the video, uh, which is a two-hand sword, uh, to be honest with you, I don't think it is a uh, it is an effective sword. I don't like it. I don't like the shape of it. I don't like the way it was invented and created, and therefore I don't. I mean. I, when I think about a two-hand sword, I think about the medieval sword, the European swords, big swords, somewhat heavier than that one. Although, you know, when you study more about swords, you will understand the swords weren't so heavy as we think. You know, in fact, if you buy a cheap sword, a cheap sword, it weighs a lot more than a real sword. The Da sword with a single edge blade, uh, it is a very fancy sword. I like the shape of it and I think it is very fancy, it, it makes me think about nobles and maybe it was used for special parades and also special rides, why not? I like this sword because it seems to be uh, quite you know, good to use, quite easy to use, quite versatile and so it is a, a really cool sword to have and if I had money I would definitely buy this one as also as the first one I already told you about. The Castana sword is a rather fancy sword. I like the grip, it's got a nice grip, it is very well decorated so then again this is another sword and I like it a lot. The Chinese iron sword you already seen it is very nice, it seems to be a good sword, but I have seen it many times, so it doesn't really, you know, impress me as much as the other swords. Well, the Taliban, the Taliban is a sword that I don't like. I don't usually like swords that tend to kind of be curved, although the Middle Eastern swords are really cool and I really like it, but this specific sword, I don't like it. The Barong, a special sword, or we can even call it a knife from Philippines, is a very interesting weapon, you know, it seems to be quite versatile. It reminds me a little bit of the uh, Gladius, somehow, and it appears to be a cool sword, very versatile, easy to carry, and quite reliable as a sword. The Parang Pandit sword, it appears to me to be a knife sword, although I don't like the grip of this sword, it's too thin and it's somewhat cylindrical and it's got um, feathers and you know I don't like feathers so much in weapons, but the, the, uh, the blade is quite interesting, it's, I think it's quite effective and it seems to be very sharp from what I see. The Kampilan sword, I don't know, it doesn't look uh, to be a strong sword, I don't like the grip, I don't like the hilt, I don't like probably anything about this sword really, you know. I don't see why somebody would buy it, but you know, then again, if you like that specific sword, go buy it. No, I wouldn't buy it myself. And the last sword is the clay one. 
and which I don't like it. It makes me think about plumbing, and so it's not, you know, my cup of tea. Um, I will stick with the first sort, the Dao, and um, I really like it. I think it's quite versatile, it's quite thin, it's quite fast as a weapon. This is my personal preference and you might like something different. I thought it was a great idea to show you more about these weapons because we are traveling with our minds and we are basically finding ourselves into another world. A world that is so far away from us unless you're from India and if you're from India I'm so happy that you're watching this video and I'm sure that you can teach me more about this. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. It was a pleasure to address you this topic although I found it to be a little bit challenging. Thank you so much for watching and remember, if you feel sad, you better call sad. Bye.